So what all did you find? Let me ask first of all, you found out that this was a convergent sequence by writing a, an induction proof that it's a monotonically increasing sequence and that it's a bounded sequence. And then once you do those two things, you know that the sequence converges. And so then my question is, what did you find that the sequence converges to? So the, the process of determining this limit was just a process of taking a limit on both sides of the recurrence relationship as n tends to infinity. And each of the sequences turns into this limit L. And again, the limit of the Tn plus 1s, it's the same sequence. It has the same terms as Tn does. It just numbers them differently. But since the terms are the same, and it's the terms that determine the limit, uh, the limit of Tn plus 1 is the same as the limit of Tn. And so both of them turn into an L. You get this algebraic equation to solve, which you rearrange into the quadratic L squared minus 3L minus 2 is equal to 0. You can hit that with the quadratic formula, find out the it's 3 plus or minus the square root of 17 over 2. And again, tell me why we know that it's the plus here and not the minus that is the limit of our sequence. After all, limits of sequences are unique. We can't have a sequence converge to two different limits. And so I can't have two answers for my L. How do I know that it's the one with the plus? Take a closer look at the minus answer. 3 minus the square root of 17 over 2. Uh, it's another nasty decimal, but the important thing about it is that it's a negative number. And what do we know about the terms of our sequence? They're all, positive. They're all positive. And it is not possible, based on one of the order results, the monotonicity of limits that we saw a few classes ago, um, it was 2.18. We didn't get a chance to see the proof in class, but this is a place where the result comes in really handy. If all the terms of my sequence are greater than 0 and it's convergent, then there's no way for the limit of that sequence to be less than 0. <coughs> That's the monotonicity of limits. So it's a reflection of the monotonicity of limits. And so we can't have the negative choice here be the limit of a sequence of positive terms. So therefore, it must be the positive answer, 3 plus the square root of 17 over 2. So I want to wrap this up by looking at this. This is problem number 59 in your packet. Um, and in the problem, um, George, a fictitious George, we don't have any Georges in, in the class here, so I can use George. Um, George wishes to prove that this sequence, so the first term is 1, the, second, the, uh, the nth term is 2 over the square of the previous term. Um, and so he wishes to show that this is convergent. Uh, and so here's what he does. He says, all right, we want to know what the value of this limit is. So we'll just take the limit on both sides of this recursion formula, Sn equals 2 over Sn minus 1 squared. Each of the sequences is going to turn into an L when we take the limit. L equals 2 over L squared. So multiply both sides by L squared, L cubed is equal to 2, and so L is the cube root of 2, and therefore we have proven that this sequence converges to the cube root of 2. So this is George's proof. And what I want you all to do in the next five minutes is to poke a hole in this proof. Figure out why, why would I, if I were George's professor grading his quiz, probably assign George a revise and reassess mark on this one. So what's wrong here? Um, work together with your, your team to poke a hole in this argument. So your, what is the objection to this proof? Your objection is that George never gave us reason to believe, I like how you said that, um, that the limit of the Sn sequence was equal to L and that also the limit of the Sn minus 1 sequence was equal to L. So uh, when we did this argument before, um, we, we gave the reader some reason to believe why those limits are both equal to L. Okay. Um, other objections? George didn't establish that this is a convergent sequence, right? which is kind of what you're getting at in your comment too. right? Um, he didn't give us reason to believe in this proof that the limit L even exists, right? um, which when you're a student in a calculus class, it's usually not a problem. right? Um, in a calculus class, when you find limits of recursive sequences, usually this algebra is all you have to do. Um, and that's because your calculus books and your calculus professors will feed you examples to work with which are examples of convergent sequences. Um, but OK, I mean, it, it, seems like if we had, it seems like if we had skipped that step of, of actually showing that this was a convergent sequence, this argument would still, we could have just still started from this beginning for our sequence we were work, looking at before, right? Just take the limit on both sides. You get L's. You solve the, the algebra that results, and you get this limit, 3 plus radical 17 over 2. And so it feels like that works here, even if we hadn't established by all of our induction arguments and everything that this was a convergent sequence, um, this algebra still works. It's not possible to impeach George's algebra right, 
if L is equal to 2 over L squared, then it is true that L is equal to the cube root of 2. There's, there's, there's no way around that. Um, but why is this argument, why is the establishing that this is a convergent sequence so important? Uh, what do the first few terms of this sequence look like? So S1 is 1. What's S2? 2 over 1 squared. Yeah, that's 2. S3 is 2 over 2 squared. What's that? 1 half. What's S4? It's 8. S5. I think it's 1 over 32. Do I have that right? Um, isn't it a number 0.03125? Yeah, that's 1 over 32. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, S6 is, I think, 128. Uh, Do I have that right? No, it might be even bigger than that, huh? 2048. Yeah, there we go. I'm doing, trying to do powers of 2 in my head here. So what's happening to these terms? 1, 2, a half, 8. 1 over 32, 2048. Uh, next one is 1 over 65,536, and then the next one after that is some ginormous power of 2, right? So what's a cube root of 2? About 1.3 something, 1.2 something. Is it reasonable that this sequence converges to 1.2 something? No. Um, in fact, and this is another secret reason why I like this example at the stage that we're at right now, how can we establish very easily that this sequence does not converge at all? Well, I'll take a look at just the odd-numbered terms. What's happening with the odd-numbered terms? 1, 1 half, 1 over 32. I think the next one is 1 over 65,000 and something. What's happening to those numbers? Yeah, so that part, the odd-numbered terms, the odd-index terms, which I'm going to write those as S sub 2K plus 1. The odd index terms appear to be converging to zero. Okay. Uh, what about the even index terms? What are they doing? Yeah, those are blowing up. 2, 8, 2048. So the even index terms, not only are they not converging, they're diverging to infinity. And so this sequence is one of these two-faced sequences, not a technical term. It's two-faced in the sense that if we divide it up into these two pieces, right, the, all the sequence of terms that have the odd index and the sequence of terms that have the even indices, um, the odd index terms are convergent. Really nice, right? They just decrease to zero. They do so, in fact, exponentially fast. Right? They get really small really quickly, and they converge to zero. But the odd, sorry, the even index terms, S2, S4, S6, those are diverging to infinity. So it's got one piece that blows up, one piece that settles down to zero. So this thing doesn't converge, because in order to converge, we need to be able to trap it in an epsilon neighborhood of its <laughs> limit for all n greater than or equal to some capital N. Right? Um, but in fact, every tail of this sequence is going to include both a bunch of odd index terms, which are decreasing to zero, but also these even index terms that are still trying to blow up to infinity. And as long as those even index terms are still trying to blow up to infinity, we're not going to be able to prove that this sequence converges. So this sequence does not converge. Um, and I want to be careful here again to use that language because it doesn't converge, but it also doesn't diverge to infinity, even though one of its subsequences, and that's the first time I'll use that word that we're going to use a lot over the next few classes, one of its subsequences, the S2K plus ones, does converge to zero. But the other of its subsequences, S2, S4, S6, blows up to infinity. And in order, it turns out, for a sequence to converge, we need all of its subsequences to be speaking the same language. All the subsequences of a convergent sequence need to converge to the same place in order for a sequence to converge. Uh, and that's not happening here. Because even if we have one example of a subsequence which has nice convergent behavior, we also have another example of a subsequence that very much does not. <laughs>